Hello everyone, this is Sam over at the Foot Whisperer Reflexology Institute with another foot reading video. Thank you all so much for continuing to send in your pictures. If you personally would like your feet read by a professional reflexologist, you can either book a reflex consultation with me using the details below, or please send your foot photos to sam at footwhisperer.com. That is the email that I use here at the Institute and your foot reading, your foot videos, your foot photos, that's it. Your foot photos will be used in a video like this where I personally read for markers that indicate mental, physical, and emotional signs of stress. But again, as a medical disclaimer, we are not going to DP or T diagnose, treat, or prescribe, or prescribe or treat. And instead, we are going to ACE. We are going to assess, coach, and educate based on reflexology theory. So looking forward to sharing round two of our foot reading videos, and please continue to send in those pictures. I'm loving this project. Moving into our first set of feet, we have Margo. Thank you, Margo, for sending in your feet. And the first thing that I wanted to point out is the big toenail. On our last set of feet, we had Sonia, who has a specialist's big toenail, which basically means that the toenail is longer than it is wide, indicating that mentally, Sonia tends to be a specialist at her craft. She really digs in to a small amount of information very, very intensely and studies it completely, versus we have this big toenail, which is the opposite. We have a wider big toenail that is shorter, and this is the jack-of-all-trades toenail. And what this means is that Margot specifically always has a story for everything. She's either very well-read, very well-traveled. She always has an anecdote in her back pocket. She knows a little about a lot of things. She's great at parties in that way, but mentally it also indicates that there's a lot happening in the mind all of the time. None of it really comes to fruition, but at the same time, just that constant buzz tends to plague this toe versus the specialist toe tends to mull things over in the background because of the depth of the nail. So, a little bit of a fine-tuning exercise for foot reading. Now, this next marker, actually you can see three circles on the picture, is what I like to call an infection of water. And what that means is not a real infection, but it's just we see multiple water elemental symptoms in the foot overall holistically. You can see the puffiness or around the heel, you can see the superficial veins on the top of the foot, and then you can also see the puffiness specifically around that big toe area. And what this means is that Margo is struggling with a slow lymphatic system. The lymphatic system pumps not by a heart like the cardiovascular system does, but through movement and proper hydration and mineral balance. So because we see all of this coagulation of fluid, a lot of Margot's symptomology will be related to dehydration. So first thing I would do with a foot like this is coach that water is medicine. Water is very much what the body needs in order to kind of properly balance things. If joint pain is present, it could just be fluid pressure instead of Margot wondering why her body is falling apart. It could just be that the amount of water needs to be upped throughout the day. And playing with that can be a wonderful coaching method for Margot's body as well. Our third marker is this wonderful deep indentation on the back of the Achilles. Now the Achilles is an extension of horizontal zone five, which means that it represents all of the reflexes for the low body. And indentation, any kind of indentation or lining represents a weakness or a lack of resources. So because we see this indentation happening, you can also see a little bit of puffiness as well, back to that water marker. But because we see this indentation very clearly, it does mean that Margot would struggle from um, low body issues, specifically things like sciatica, weakness or spasms in the muscles of the legs, and just overall discomfort in that area. 
Good news, though, is that because there is so much stagnant fluid, it could just be part of the fluid issue, and the lower body discomfort may not manifest if the fluid balance of the body is taken care of. So those three symptoms I see in concert. It's often very important when clients come in for a session with me or a consultation with me that I let them know that when certain issues manifest, there's always a reason for it, and it doesn't always mean that you're broken. Sometimes it just means that lifestyle needs to change in order for the body to come back into balance. And that is definitely what we're seeing here with Margo. So Margo, thank you so much for letting us look at your feet. Moving on to our next pair of feet, we have Anne. And Anne is actually a student of the Foot Whisperer's online classes, and she's also a local client of ours. So thank you, Anne, for submitting your feet. I know that you love us so much. And first thing that we're going to pick on and for is these calluses on the balls of the feet. And whenever we see callusing, it's what we would call an earth-based symptom. It rules hardness in the reflexes, defensive tendencies, also an accumulation of very fibrous tissue. Because the ball of the foot represents all of the reflexes for horizontal zone two, being the chest, shoulders, ribs, reflexes for the heart, lungs, basically everything chest cavity, this callusing would represent hardness in those tissues. So we would see an increase of shoulder tension, uh, breathing problems, as well as uh, not necessarily physical hardness of the heart, but more of an emotional hardness of the heart, kind of keeping things close to the vest emotionally. So that is always a very fun marker. This is something that I see in a lot of my clients who also report symptoms like kyphosis or that hunchback when they're hunched over a computer or a desk for long periods. This is the marker that I'll often see. So breaking that movement pattern is part of the coaching that we would talk about. Our second marker we've seen in our last video. So James, in our last video, had these deep lines that were on the base of the big toes and into the top of the ball of the foot. And what we had mentioned as far as what these lines represent is weakness in the head and upper shoulder complex. Again, lines being weakness, the toes, specifically big toes representing head and neck, and then the lining representing weakness, we can see tendency for weakness in the head, but also that T1, T2 space into those shoulder line, upper shoulder tissues. But here's the kicker. We have marker number three, which is the lines are deepest and most visually present on the third toe. Now, this may seem very, very random to people who aren't trained in foot reading, but to an experienced reflexologist, this is gold information. And the third vertical zone, or everything that's in line with the third toe, represents the influence of the upper digestive system. Specifically, since we're looking at the left foot, it represents the influence of the stomach reflexes. Because we have vertical zone three influence, and then the lines are in horizontal zone one representing head and neck. This means that all of that weakness in the head and neck that Anne experiences is going to be related to the reflexes of the stomach. So this means diet, but also the mental emotional aspect of work and career are going to be very, very forward when we're looking at if Anne's complaining of a headache, it's always going to be related to the stomach. And that's because of that vertical zone three, horizontal zone one influence. I know I'm using a lot of fancy terms, so if you would like more information, please feel free to comment below or email me, and we can always talk about what all of this means, especially with our upcoming online courses. But thank you, Anne. Those are our three markers for Anne. And now we're going to go over to Marjolene, who was very, very kind to send us her feet. Look at her pretty red toenail polish. Now, in our previous video, we had also talked about toe length. And Sonia was the one that actually had a big toe that was shorter or on level with the other toes. Here we see the exact opposite. That big toe is very, very forward. Props to the big toe club. I have really, really big, big toes. And when that big toe juts forward like that and is very, very long and present, it always indicates somebody who's super mentally active, somebody who really has a strong mind, somebody who's also very vocal about 
about their opinions and is not afraid to say what they think. So this foot specifically is a wonderful example of that. And Marjolene, me and you were on the same page. I'm right there with you. We almost have the exact same big toe size. So I can talk with you a little bit about that as well. So just email me if you have questions. But here's another favorite marker of mine, marker number two. We have the mark of the overthinker. This is something that I love to point out because it's another marker that I have. But when we have the separation between the big toe and the second toe, it becomes very significant from a mental emotional standpoint because this means that the big toe representing the vertical zone one, everything, thoughts, and opinions, and the second toe relating to vertical zone two, everything, feelings, and emotions are separated. So when I see this marker, it indicates somebody who's very much always in their head. They're always going to be separating logic from their heart as far as what they feel. It's going to be completely separate from what's going on in their head. It's almost like they build this internal world, this mental fortress that nobody really gets to penetrate, hence the name Mark of the Overthinker. But another fascinating twist, we have the separation very present on the right foot, but then we see that the big toe and the second toe are kind of kissing a little bit. They're coming together on the left foot. And what this means is that more recently, this individual has actually slowed down that separation, kind of mended that a little bit. We can see the initial gap is still there, right, as the toes start to kind of jut forward from the ball of the foot, but where they meet is together. So instead of this person really feeling like their head is separate from their heart, more recently their heart and their head have been coming together and really doing some fantastic fantastic things for them internally as far as being able to vocalize both what they think and what they feel. So Marjolene's really found a little bit more uh, connectivity in her nervous system as of late. So well done. Third marker, again, this foot is all about the toes, uh, but we see that the third, fourth, and fifth toes are starting to really claw. And what that means is that the, the pads of the toes are starting to plant into the ground. Or if you were looking directly at the toes, they're starting to curl away from you instead of looking straight at you. And what this means is in terms of vertical zones, that these vertical zones are starting to shut down. And this is not something that I like to see. It means that the nervous system is starting to retract, specifically vertical zone three, representing upper digestive, but also work and career. Vertical zone four in line with the fourth toe, representing lower digestive and family and relationships. And then also vertical zone five in line with the fifth toe, representing lower body and sense of security and how Marjolene is moving forward. Those toes are starting to noticeably retract, meaning that both their physical and mental emotional meanings are starting to get hidden and pulled back. So although Marjolene is able to express her feelings and emotions, all of those other aspects in terms of work, family, and sense of security, those are not so comfortable topics for her to talk about. And likewise, upper, lower digestive and low body, they're on the weak side right now. So once those toes start to straighten out, she'll also see a reversal in weakness in those reflexes. We can also just jump, not a marker specifically that I've outlined, but you can see the superficial veining around the dorsal ankle, the top of that ankle, representing a lot of lymphatic stagnation as well. So those lower body reflexes really need to be pumped and opened above all things. So Marjolene, thank you so much for lending us your feet for this foot reading session. That is all I have for you. Remember, send in your photos to sam at footwhisperer.com and I will leave you with this final message. 